Joe is our missing link and he either <laughs> comes or he doesn't. And, but we need to get moving on this. So I'll, in, I'll let him in as soon as he gets here. Understood. We don't want to waste any more of uh, Mr. Friedel's time. Oh, you're good. Yeah. You're good. My time we're working on here tonight. Yeah, it's Tony's oh. time we're working on tonight. Tony's <laughs> like, boom, boom, boom. Okay, okay. Well, in that case, thank you so much for joining us, Joan. Um, so um, I guess the biggest thing we need to think about is, or maybe maybe not the biggest thing, but the first thing I'd like to think about is with 2020 being so challenging and 2021 not being too terribly different as of yet, what do we think went well with the way the pool was ran that we can continue doing and what do we think we could do better or needs to be changed in your opinion? Well, I think given our parameters, I think 2020 because of all of us starting with Tiffany went extremely well. Um, you know, obviously I'd like, as we all would, to be fully open like the old days. I guess we're just going to have to wait to see. I guess I saw in the news tonight where DeWines wants to open the state up. So hopefully by then it'll be normal. Some things that I thought went really well that I would like to keep in place is I think it went very well not having daycares. I think our clientele, I think the staff, I think you know, for the little bit of money that they brought in, my personal opinion is not to go back to daycares, not saying we couldn't do, you know, individual things like we used to do with the uh, vineyard and stuff where they rent us out for a day here or there. But without a substantial increase in money, as I told Tiffany last year, I would just as soon do without the daycares. It helped with the bathrooms, it helped with the cleanliness, everything. I loved you know, I know we can't always do that. Personally, I grew very fond of the reservation system. Um, that was very nice, but, you know, hopefully we won't have to do that again. Other little things that went well, I loved, um, you know, maybe we'll still do that, limit one or two people at a time to the bathroom. We kept our bathrooms spotless all day long, easy to maintain. It really wasn't a big issue for people, especially not having the daycares there. So those are a couple of things that stick out to me right away. Perfect, perfect. And I did see as well that um, the new national administration is going to be working towards upping vaccination numbers up to 1.5 million per day by the end of or by mid spring, which should bring us back to a sense of herd immunity and reasonable normalcy by summer. So hopefully things will continue to improve. Um, I completely agree with the um, removal of us being used as a daycare service for the baby, for the, you know, the a babysitting service for the daycares. Um, because it seems like from things that I've, you know, I'd heard last year that, and from other people that it just, it just was, you know, the pool was being used as just another activity at great benefit to them and detriment to the community. Um, so I, I, we're completely on the same page there. Um, the limiting bathrooms, that's probably still a necessary thing because of, you know, the enclosed space issues. Um, I also heard a lot of good things in the community about the reservation system. So if there's no issues technology wise about keeping that system in place, like we don't have to renew something, that's probably a good thing worth bringing back. Um, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to stop in. If we don't have to do a reservation system, I got zero interest in it. You guys all say that, but it was a yeah. nightmare. Um, I had people emailing me, cancel my reservation, move it to four o'clock. Can I get two more spots? Can I do this? Can I do, I, I'm not a full-time reservationist. If we don't need it this year, it's done. Yeah. Um, okay. now, yeah, even though I was in favor of it, I do like it. However, I think people were accepting of it last year because we were at least able to be open. However, I think if numbers are good and the immunity is good, I don't think people would be as accepting of it this year joining with a membership. I, I don't disagree. Um, this year's gonna be so different because of having the baby pool open and having that extra space over there. It'll be interesting to see the numbers. Now, the one, you know, not to cut into David's time on that, and I know Tony has somewhere to be. Um, I think that setting the pool membership prices based on the fact that that could, and, and understand this, 
John, we got you guys an iPad for down there in case we have to have a reservation system. That way you guys aren't bringing your own. Okay. Um, we did get the Wi-Fi, <clears throat> the Wi-Fi last year. Right. So you guys won't have to use your own stuff. You guys will have the iPad for the reservation system. And in and, and my funniness of the reservation system, it's a nightmare. But if that's the way that we're going to open, clearly I'm on board. Um, I will do everything that we did this year um, to make sure that it works. So, um, you know, I, I we don't know if we're going to have to use it. It will be ready to go to where we did get you guys some more equipment to being able to handle that. Okay, uh, and if we have to do it, Tiffany, you push um, you and I and the office staff will get together and you push that more of that off on uh, mm -hmm. us because they have they have the time exactly. more than you do. Well, and that's that's going to be part of it. That was the big push in making sure you guys didn't have to use your own equipment. And you guys had, you know, the pool actually had equipment down there for you guys to be able to use. Um, trying to change people's reservations on a phone is just not easy. And I know towards the end, you guys started bringing an iPad, but you know, we just, we knew that that was something you guys were going to need this year. It's going to have a keyboard. It's going to have all of that. Tony just came and got his the other day. So we will be more equipped to being able to handle a reservation system. Um, keeping the pool hours from noon until eight at this point, um, I am in agreement with, and I don't know what John's feelings are towards that. Unless we go to the reservation system, um, that extra hour was essential for making the reservation system work. Um, to where people had equal hours and doing different things like that. So, um, is it open and early? Is that what it is? Yeah, leaving it, we've always done noon to eight, is my understanding. But last year we did 11 to eight for some of the days, um, especially on the weekends, to make the reservation system. Um, I think we did like, what was it, 11 to two, two to five, and five to eight is how it worked. If um, I remember right, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we would probably do that same thing if John was okay with it all only on the weekends, if we sure. had to. Um, but as of right now, I mean, I'm, I'm in the same boat. The only way, you know, the only other thing for you guys to think about or discuss is, and again, this is entirely up to everybody, you know, whether if we're 50% back to normal, let's say Franklin County doesn't implement anything that's it, but obviously we still COVID's not going anywhere, at least right now you know, that's going to be determined from all of you guys or all of us, whether or not we want to implement these things. So just because we're not forced to do it, do we feel like we should do it? So that's going to be a question that I don't, I don't want to answer because I think, you know, I also still want people to feel safe and come. Um, if we had to do a reservation system to where we did like noon to four and four to eight, you know, that type of thing. So I think there's, you know, there's a couple thoughts. The hard part about this whole thing is just not knowing. And, and I think that's trying to set the pool fees with the fact of not knowing because knowing what we know now, I will tell you that our pool memberships were too low last year. If it wouldn't have been for that, we would have made a killing last year. Um, the issue that we had was you have your families of three, four, five that took up five slots and you could only have so many people there. Um, especially on those hot days when, you know, they were turning people away left and right. So, you well, know, that still that's made more money last oh, we did. than we ever have. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, no, I, ever, but yeah. Oh, no, I would so go with the daily that. guest fees that were phenomenal last year. Yes, they were. Um, so the other point, Tony, that I, you know, I think we were talking about, and I didn't, I did my quick adjustments to the pool fees. And then, you know, I'm going to tell you guys my thoughts. And then you guys are ultimately the ones that decide. And David, I don't know if you had a chance to look at them to see what your thoughts were, but I think one of my biggest questions for you guys on this is like, I love the 10 day guest pass at $80, the day pass at $9, the 65 and over memberships and couples and all of that, I think is fine. Like I don't have any issues with any of that stuff. Here's where my question is. We have a brand new baby pool coming in. How do I say this nicely? Um, but yeah, think to raise prices to accommodate the new infrastructure and the new opportunities. Yeah, because as of right now, we have children three and under free. But my understanding, that, um, John, correct me if I'm wrong. My understanding is the reason we did that is because we didn't have a baby pool. Um, um, no, that's that's been in effect even when we did have a baby pool. And uh, you guys obviously decide this. I don't. I would uh, whatever you want to do with the fee structure, though, Tiffany. I would consider raising the guest fees to $10 even. Okay. 
because it's easier and instead of handing out two dollars well and a dollar. what the, with what the other pools were charging okay. and 10 is yeah would Not you sure. start what do you recommend as far as the three and under being free making it two and under free making it three leaving it three and under free nobody's well, free children under four is five dollars i mean what, we, I don't know. what we've always done is when if they are three years old they pay if they're under three, they don't. When they come to the pool, if they're three or over, they pay. Anybody under three does not pay. And, you know, there's, th that's always the tricky thing because sometimes a mom will bring three kids and she said three kids under three and says, I'm not going to swim. Well, I always end up charging the adult because essentially we're letting four people in. That's my point. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can work out the wording of that because Kids under three need to be watched. So at least an adult needs to pay for, you know, because okay. the kids aren't going to be in that baby pool by themselves. Okay. So maybe we actually do post something like that. Um, you know, no. Um, under three with, a, or under a certain age with an adult. Admission. With a paying adult. Yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's good. Um, oh, that'd be fine. So yeah, that makes that makes total sense. Yeah, it's like we we don't want to be cruel to our residents, yeah. but we have to you know have some form of right. Well, and what do the other folks do for is it two or three? Yeah, or it's, it's it's very similar, Tony, to what we yeah. do. And now, Tiffany, you're bringing up so many good points because we're all in. You know, we don't know right now, and so the other thing, you know, even if we can be more opened up, I think for some of our residents. It was nice that, you know, the, we call them the scaredy cats, but that's that's their prerogative. If we would still maybe every couple of weeks allow maybe a four hour block or, you know, a low, low attendance or something so that we can, you know, accommodate our residents who feel that way. Yes. And I don't, I'm not in disagreeance. That worked very well. And those people were very appreciative of it. So um, I'm not in disagreeance. Okay. David, do you we want- have can I add real quick on the, Go ahead. the fees? Did we do the the reduce rate after four o'clock or whatever it was last year? No. We we stopped it because of the um time the time ones. Right. Because yeah, we the had reservation system would make that impossible. Yeah. That was the emergency council the, meeting. I'd like to, I mean, if we have to go through all, you know, have all the precautions, and I wouldn't want to do it. Correct. And I think if we're back to normal, I'd like to see that back. I don't know how we go about, you know. I think the way that we were, we were, the way that we had it two years ago, John, is we were doing residents only after a certain time was discounted. It wasn't for everybody. It was just residents only after a certain time. Um, but we stopped that last year in mid, like it was in the paperwork, but we, um, that's where we had that, I don't want to call it a special meeting, but we hurried up and did it because of the times. Um, that was one of the things that you guys did. I just to... think we got to hold off until, you know, we got a better idea how things are going to go, maybe. I don't, you know. I think you're going to be May. I really think you're going to be, I think here's now, this is going to be a question for you guys for legislation is whether or not you guys can put something in legislation that says, administration can adjust rates up to 10% or something along those lines, um, or adjustments can be made, you know, due to COVID, COVID like, yeah. yeah, something along those lines giving me, cause you know, I'm not going to do anything without asking you guys. I think you guys are all pretty certain on that. But if John comes to me and says, Hey, can we do this? I think it would be phenomenal well, to be it, able to do that. It also brings up, I've always wondered why the heck we have to do this by resolution every year. You know, that's I know. something I would even ask our law director about. I know there's a lot of things. That, that is a kind of, great question. That, because it, it'd be nice if we didn't have to do this, then we could change stuff on a, right. you know, on the fly. <laughs> and, and then we do a resolution we, that's kind of official, and then we got to go through all this correct. rigmarole. That'd be a good question for Jesse. I'll do send we him really a, have to do this every year? Okay. I'm I'll, trying to yeah. understand why. It would be nice to be able to just work with John and the committee and just kind of go back and forth and not right. do a resolution. We have to make changes in the middle. We can make changes without having to right. have freaking meetings and all that stuff. Yeah, right. yeah. I remember last time we had to do it legislatively pretty mm -hmm. rapidly. So that is a good avenue to explore with legislation. It is. Um, it is. 
Um, okay, so did you want to go over the pricing, David? To any adjustments you wanted to make to it, or do you want to hear my recommendations? Or well, I, I think your and my recommendations are probably going to be quite similar. I would agree with you know the flat rate of ten to be more ten dollars, okay. you know ten dollars to be more comparable with the rest of the pools um, around us. Again, I. I think the under threes and, you know, the three and under free, I think that's kind of a tricky situation. I mean, we don't want to, we don't want to be cruel and, you know, ex, you know, extortive to our residents, but, you know, there, maybe we should add like, a, you know, any children under whatever need to have a paying adult with them, obviously. Um, if, if let's say, let's say by spring, we're really getting out, you know, 1.5 million vaccines a day we've reached a New Zealand level immunity by early to mid summer, we can switch off the reservation system. We can bring back the, you know, the $5 after five or whatever time we choose for residents. Um, from the beginning though, I think we should start out assuming we're gonna be doing reservations at least for the first bit. And just be to be prepared for that, and if mm -hmm. things improve faster, then we won't. Then we'll just be pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah, I don't have things. Yeah. What? So, yeah, I agree. Those are the major things I would say, price wise. So I think. Did you have anything else you'd like to add to that, ma'am? Well, now I'm going through the actual resident rates and then the non-resident rates. Like I would leave the one alone. I'm just going based off last year. I would not up the single price. I would not up the double price. I would not up the triple price. But the memberships. I'm talking about the membership for residents and non members. Okay. And okay. the only thing that, and the only reason I'm saying this is this is if we have to do a reservation system. For four, <laughs> I would only go up for residents to $10. We're at 265 this year. I would do 275. Hang on now. I didn't do that. Oh. Yeah, I did. For four, I did 275. What's the next step after that? Is it... I went to five people as 295. And it's like five and over? Or there's not. And then I did, six. Six, we did six at 315. Oh, okay. And then if you have over six, it's $65 more. And again, the only reason that I'm, and maybe we do over five. The thing that gets us, and, and John, you can chime in on any of this. The thing that gets us is if we have to do a reservation system, we had families of five and six that came every single day. And then half the time they wouldn't show, not half the time. Then if those people don't show up, you have a pool that's half empty. And you, I, you, We can't do a reservation system that we start charging people or whatever, I, but I would get on them. I mean, I would send them messages and do all of that, but the only reason that I'm saying that some of these need to go up is if you have, because then you can't have, you can't have your $10 a day people. If the pool's full with all these memberships, then I can't get these $10 a day people. And that's why we made money last year. We made money off the $9, not off these memberships. We stopped selling memberships because, I mean, if you think about this, and I'm just going to do a, a little math problem here. If you do $195, $295, Divided by, hang on, 295, divide that by five people. They're paying $59. So basically all they have to do is come to the pool six times and they've already made their money. Right. Six times. Some of them come six times in one week and John will vouch for that. Yeah. So you're, you, and we're not trying to make this a, money maker, but we are trying to make this not lose 25, 30,000. I'm not interested in scamming the residents and all of that kind of stuff, but I am, I you know, know, I think if we're not losing 30,000, I'm, I'm fine with losing money. We're going to, um, but yeah. that's, that's where I'm coming up with the membership prices. And as of right now, they would, as of last year, they only had to come four and a half times to make the money back. Yeah, I, I I fully agree with you, Madam Mayor, that this that I mean I think we should I'm be running this little... pool as a not quite a public service like nonprofit, you know, something closer to that than a money making operation. I completely right. agree. Um and like I said, we're um, only talking about ten and twenty. I, that being said, 
I don't see it. I don't have a Yeah, problem. that being said, I completely Yeah, I don't have a problem with that either. You you've done more number crunching on this. I know you're more of a you're more of a tanner than I am. I, I just burn the second I look at the sun. So you spent more time out there than I have. You know more about it. Um, well, we don't want our prices to go too high because we want yeah. our we want people there. And we do Absolutely. have competition with JC. There's no question about that. We are going to have the baby pool, which is going to help bring in some people. I do believe it's going to be amazing. Um, I don't want to raise them too high. We also have the, the $25 um, $25 off for residents. I looked at a calendar and picked April 23rd for that date. I that know works. that some people may think that that's a bad date. Uh, this is a great question for council because I don't make this decision. Do you guys prefer that date to go into May so we feel like we know more about what's happening? Or are you guys okay with April 23rd for the extra $25 off? Any suggestions? I don't know why we ever do that in the first place. To be honest with you. Well, you again, started it, Tony. I went back in the days of just the pool board. We, <coughs> oh, I understand how why we started it. It was to get some money from the, for the material, you know, for the pool right. stuff, but we're past that. I it's think it's not a, like we need because the thing is, is, we don't, I understand that we need the cash, but we don't need that that month or, you know, a month or a week or whatever. Yeah, I, for I, me, it's more it. about giving residents a benefit. Right. I yeah. Good faith yeah. Uh, people so deserve to. Well, I know Park think, is a good well, place to live. People should be rewarded for living here. I, I get that. But my point is, I don't, I'm don't. i in favor of giving the residents a break, but I don't understand why there's a date for that break. Because if not, then we would just lower all of the membership prices. Because we, have, we already have Minerva Park resident rates, and we already have non-resident rates. The $25 is if we just get people to do it instead of thinking about it until June. And then they all of a sudden decide to get a membership. Just like in anything else, people need a date because otherwise they try to work you all summer on something. Well, I didn't do that, but can I get this discount? I think it's very important, whatever we do, that we have a date. I agree. And it's I would up say to you guys well. to decide on the date, not me. And I would, I would prefer it to be a Friday for anybody that does do that because if we have somebody in the office, um, that way they get mail that day. That way, if we do Saturday, you might as well say Monday because people that drop off checks on Saturday, Sunday, but if we do must be dropped off by 4 PM Friday, this date. And again, whether or not you guys pick April or May does not matter to me. Uh, yeah, that that's, I mean, April 23rd or, you know, whatever the next Friday is or the next Friday after that, April 30th or What's I mean 30th. And that's more uh, yeah, like 30th is enough round. I guess. Okay. That's a nice round. So for the member, for the non-members, I left number one alone, two members alone, three members, I just bumped it up by $5. Four goes to $295, five goes to $315, and six goes to $325. And All then right. Huh? Works for me. I mean, yeah, that's fine. It seems like, it seems like a nice reset, um, yeah, like said, or a nice, you know, adjustment. Yeah. And then leaving the ten dollars like nice... for the member or the non the day pass. And should things go back to normal, we can always put in like a caveat that you know the the five dollars after five can be reinstated somehow legislatively. Um, so it sounds like we have our pricing pretty well set. We have our operating um, framework reasonably well set, kind of a, like a, you know, starting out with a 2020 and hopefully advancing to 2021 being better towards early to mid summer. Um, so those are both good things to get checked off. My question for Mr. John though is, um, as the community committee, which the pool falls, you know, with, or as the village government and council itself, what do you need from us? What, what things do you need from us to make your job easier, to make, to make the pool run more smoothly, to make it a better time for your staff? Um, you know, I mean, AAA, we're good. 
I was uh, just thinking about a couple things here. I'm sure Tiffany wants to continue with our swim team. They seem to be, uh, yeah, they're, they're a great asset for us, bring in great money, take care of the pool. The other thing I wanted to ask you, Dave, maybe you would know this because we had talked about it last year. Uh, if we would like to set up another meeting with the, the gentleman who does our machines because we had talked about perhaps enhancing some um, concession this year, whether it be, uh, I know Tiffany had mentioned last year with some sandwich machines, microwaves, if that would be an improvement, I think too, for the people coming to the pool. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Um, so we have, I know I made a few phone calls to that gentleman last year, but it kind of fizzled out as you know, COVID progressed. Right. Um, so I get, yeah, getting back in touch with that guy would be fantastic. Um, I no longer have his number, however, is the problem. If I could get that emailed or texted to me, that'd be phenomenal. And I can try to figure out when he'd be able to be looped in on a Zoom meeting if possible. And we can discuss the food specifics since we seem to have the operating framework and costs pretty well figured out. Yeah, I think that would be a big asset for, you know, for everybody. And David, uh, tell me your number and then I'll text you his right away. It is 419-905-5757. And I don't mind that being recorded, Tiffany. Don't worry about it. I want to hear from the people. <laughs> okay. And oh, then you have to worry someone asking to hear the recording. So you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, the only other question that I have is, and it's just not on here, and I probably should have just pulled up the legislation and I did not. Um, John, what is your recommendation on parties? Just like the, the quick. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I'd like to see, you know, us be able to do more than we did last year. You know, um, I like that we use discretion because, because of our lighting situation and stuff. I don't want like a nighttime party with a bunch of little kids since we're not a well-lit area, but, um, you know, I like, uh, you know, a few years ago, I told you we went with this with Lynn because, you know, we were getting some of these wild ass based book parties book. So I think, um, you know, you you played a big role in that decision and approval last year. And I would like, you know, anything that gets booked, I would still like to run by you for your approval. If you think it's something that the pool should do or shouldn't do, I think those parameters we put in place work very well. See, and I'm, I, I think it's hard to, and Tony, you may agree with this too. I mean, I just, I feel like it's hard to set a number to, we had a couple very small little birthday parties and things like that. And it was good to being able to um, coordinate with them, coordinate with you and being able to do that kind of thing. So again, I think it's, I, to me, I would like to be able for John and myself to have some discretion on being able to have some of these parties. Um, hopefully graduation parties may happen. And that, I mean, I'm even considering maybe doing something like that. Who knows? Um, school parties, things like that. If we have a set number and a set price, it's very difficult to work with people when we are looking for um, being able to let a soccer team come in after hours or something like that. So I don't know if it's something that, you know, council would be okay with John and I, it just being at our discretion, as far as if there's a daycare that wants to come in and we just kind of negotiate with them that way. And same thing with the after hour parties. I don't know how councils typically felt like that in the past versus not really publishing it. Does that make, I don't want to sound like I'm not being transparent. I, I think but, that goes with my question about whether we have to do this, you know, whether we can, I agree. you know, do this. I, I think that's a great idea. I, I, I'd like to see the, well, it kind of works both ways. I like to see the price to rent the pool go down for residents. Right. You know, but I don't want it to be so low that, you know, that bunch of people, you know, that it's right. getting out of control, you know, well, and that's why I think having just, you know, taking it on a case by case basis. And, and that's kind of what, what the fee is. And, right. Without saying this on a public record, that's kind of what we did last year. I don't know that we 
really, you know, we just kind of, John and I would talk about it each time, you know, this is what we want to do. And it was nice being able to just say, hey, we want to do this with MPCA, you know, we let them kind of take control of the pool certain times in which I think we should. Um, but I don't think, I, I, it would just be nice for us to be able to um, determine exactly what we're going to do with the party fees and with, you know, do they want one hour or two hours and being able to be more flexible with residents, um, being fair, obviously, uh, with everybody and not setting, you know, one person's 100 and one person's 500. But I think it really does depend on the type of group. Uh, you know, I think that there, it's all, there's just a lot of variations to it. So I would agree as well. Is there a way we could do that? Does that have to be legislated to grant that's, that discretion or? That's, that's what, what I figure out. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to, I will send a message out to them why we do this legislatively, if we have to do it legislatively. Um, but it would be nice because it is like John well, said, it was easy to coordinate with just him and I trying to determine yes or no. And I don't, I don't want to get in any trouble if you guys are negotiating prices when we've got a set price and under legislation. Exactly. You know, no, exactly. Uh, that's what we Co got. With COVID, I think we could get away with it, um, you know, with the, you know, wording it in legislation, but just theoretically, yeah, we don't want to do something that we're not allowed to do. But I'm just going to say it with COVID. I'm, I mean, there were probably things that maybe we shouldn't have done last year, just like the two hour, you know, we were doing two hour increments, letting people come in for $5 because it was the, um, the sensitive groups. So, I mean, there was things that we did last year as spur of the moment that maybe wasn't as, um, I know council wouldn't have had an issue, but like you're, you're alluding to, is this something that we shouldn't be doing? <laughs> we shouldn't be doing. I mean, it's something that, or is it, it something nice that if we could do this if we didn't have to go through all these meetings right. just to set fees. Right. And well, I'm, I feel, yeah. I just can't figure out to me, I'm, it doesn't, I don't understand. I, I can't imagine Columbus you know, goes and has a council meeting to set the fees for pools. I just, maybe they do too. I, I just don't understand why we got it. Well, right. we have to do this. Right. Well, and again, it's one of those things that just having a yay or nay in one of the council meetings to me is maybe sufficient instead of actual legislation. So right. here's the pool fees. Is everybody in agreement? Yay or nay? Um, that would, would be ideal. Last summer was very above board because it was a different world, not just limited yeah. to the river park. I mean, it was, um, you know, you try to accommodate all of your residents, all of your members, make everybody happy. So I oh, think yeah. that was all great. I agree. It, it was, it was definitely, uh, we're all hopeful for an easier year, but again, I think. Yes. Yeah. I, all right. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Um, you know, since I know we don't have that, fire department, blah, blah, blah. Do you, is, do you, to your knowledge, it would Rick still be willing to um, take on filling the pool for us? I am told, yes, I am told he still has the equipment to do it. Okay. Um, my, my <laughs> expectation, yeah, my expectation at this point this year is everything is gonna be pretty much the same as before. We get the permit, he will be able to fill it that's what I've been told. Um, obviously, maybe we'll start a little earlier verifying everything this year and making sure that we don't come across a little hiccup right at the end. Um, but that is my understanding. Yeah, same thing with me. He led me to believe last year that he would be willing to continue in that capacity because I said, Rick, you just got to let me know so right. we can make other arrangements. And from what he said, um, you know, I think it's a go. Yes, I I'm in... I'm completely understanding that the answer is yes. Um, but again, we if both, something happens- We both understand that we all understand that we uh, we really need to get this done. You know, we need to get the equipment and stuff and have another plan, plan B. Well, and yeah, I think that's a topic in itself. So mm -hmm. um, at this point, yes, I believe so. I also, you know, am prepared for- um, potentially, I'm going to say this, I want to make sure that we start getting ready. Um, and, and John, I know you're ready for this, but what, as soon as the weather breaks, making sure that we get the pool drained, making sure that we check out any potential, um, bottom issues that we have, 
whether or not we're going to need to call Patterson and have them do a full fledged whatever or one eight hundred Tony Benedetti. Um, exactly no, what we need to do for Rick, the big for the. I don't think that, the board, I think Rick. Rick will probably agree that I don't think that those issues that they were bringing up or uh, pressing as it was made out to be. Well, we made it through the pool year, and I know Rick was. Um, I know at the end, or you know, we had talked to Rick, and Rick said that he would work with us at the beginning of the year. I just want to make sure we give Rick ample time to do anything that we need to do um, to get some repairs done if we need to. Well, yeah, but we we really we have really got to find a different contractor than one eight hundred Tony Benedetti. That guy is just something else. I know Rick was amazing. He he <laughs> dropped everything to come and help a couple times. Um, so and that's Rick West. Yes. Am I saying okay? Yeah, so no, he I, was great. I'm glad you brought him up because I wanted to. I think we need to see. I don't know what we're doing as far as going back to school. Who the hell knows? Nobody knows anything. But if we um, you know, do we want to go the route where, um, and I'm fine with that as long as I have the time and getting some guys uh, coordinating with Tony, getting the sump pumps in, we can clean it out and clean it up. My only concern is if by some chance we're back in school, that's going to be somewhat difficult. So I didn't know if that's something we want to talk to Rick early, if he's interested in doing it, or we just want to handle it ourselves. What's your thought on that? I'm going to let Tony answer that question. I, here's what I'm going to tell you. I don't have the time um, to go clean it out. I will do it on a Sunday with Lori and Tony only. That's the only <laughs> way I'm doing it. But other than that, um, it I, here's what I want to show up at the pool in May and it'd be absolutely wonderful and lay out. So other than that, I do not want to be cleaning goose stuff out of the bottom again. Um, I will but I would prefer it just be done. So Tony, I give me your- I mean, once it gets emptied and we'll see what we got, I think I have to kind of take it from there. But what I'm saying to me is, are we gonna empty it or is it something we wanna ask Rick because when he was gonna do it, he was gonna empty it, power wash and all that. So what are you, what's your thoughts? Well, I think that's where our maintenance guy, I mean, I can empty in it and clean on it. It what I what we may need to do is more repairs and paint again, maybe. Okay. That's the thing I think we're gonna run into every year is once we drain that, um, you know, you're gonna see all those rust spots again. Every year that I think is gonna happen. Right. Right. And that's something Rick can help with though, is it not? Well, that's what I'm saying. Rick to you know, getting to the painting part of it. I think maybe we can do the getting it ready for painting. Yeah, I just think we'll need to bring bring him in and make him aware early because what happens is he gets booked up and then we, you know, on Monday we discover we need something. We want him on Wednesday and he's got four pools to fill. And so we don't want to, you know, alienate him like that. Not that he doesn't want to help us, but, you know, he's, he's more than generous and willing to help us. But he also has big paying customers too. So I would suggest that we, you know, maybe we drain it early, as early as we can. I know Brian's always willing to power wash and stuff. The only thing I would do this year, Tony, is I want to coordinate with you better. We've got to drain and clean at the same time so we don't get into that mess where the pool's empty and then the sun bakes it on again. Not your fault. I'm just saying, you know, you used to put in because you want to empty the pool. But then it without, makes it harder to without, clean it up. Right. Without knowing that, that creates a whole, we, we just got to coordinate that better this year. Okay. And for goodness sake, you know, throw, you know, text me too. I live a stone's throw away from the pool. I'm not a, I'm not experienced with contracting, but I can be another set of hands. I'm happy to help. Well, we'll, we'll take up on that when we're cleaning out the deep end. <laughs> he has no idea what he's in for. No idea what we're, how much fun <laughs> that is. Well, I don't know. You get into bowel. <laughs> True. That's joined, funny. I joined this exercise in American government to serve the people. And if that, that involves shoveling goose poop out of a, you know, pool bottom, then so be it. All righty. There, there, there is always that. And I'm just going to say it was probably the funniest two hours of my life. <laughs> it, it really was. It was not as bad as well, what you had to laugh for you. Hilarious. <laughs> Tiffany, you have, your daughter's graduating this year, correct? Yes. Okay. And, uh, I, I was going to text you or throw this out to you. And, you know, I don't know if you can do it. I don't even know if I could do it. But what I was thinking, especially if we can get the pool ready early, 
you know, I'm in charge of the seniors at my school. And it, obviously, just like your daughter, they were going to do much this year. And years ago, I stopped it about five, six years ago, where um, the seniors would come and have a pool party. And I would, my friend Scott, he came and catered it. Now they paid, we paid the pool and stuff. But I was thinking about if we can get it ready early enough in May, that like mid-May, if I had my seniors, if you wanted to talk to whoever's in charge of your daughters, perhaps they had a senior pool party or something, um, something for the kid and also to make us a little bit of money too. I would love it. I mean, and I think that's, and uh, Tony, that's, that's kind of what we're idea. talking about, being able to coordinate some of these different events going on that we aren't charging, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about, Tony. Just being able to do stuff like that makes a big, one of the things that I know MPCA is going to be talking, well, we had talked about it last year. If they're not interested, it's, it might be something that we do. Um, but doing like right before the kids go back to school, doing like a teen night at the pool um, after hours. So there was, there was a couple different things that we were really interested in and it doesn't really fit in here. And, you know, the, nobody's going to fork up the $200. We're going to let the kids pay X amount of dollars. So you know, just being able to do some of those kind of things um, without worrying about are we following the law or, you know, whatever is, is really what we need to find out. So, no, again, John, I'm, I'm in total agreement with that. I mean, I, I, I would love to be able to do it. To, you know, because all these parties are always MPCA, you know, sponsored. It wouldn't hurt for the village to sponsor something. Right. I think it'd be really cool, too, if just a couple nights during the summer, and it could be, you know, resident only swim from nine to 11, where we just charge everybody who wants to come that's a resident $5. And the pool yep. puts that on. We don't really need, you know, the um, community association. Then, you know, we just deposit. We don't have to money. call it wine and cheese. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. this, this way they could bring kids and everything. You know, that's something we could always throw together if we know we're having a hot week in the 90s. Uh, Sunday, start saying, hey, th put it on Facebook, Thursday night. 9 to 11, residents only, 5 to 11. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. sure. That's I'm great. I would love to do the, like, dive-in movies, like they had at Wyandotte Lake or whatever. Where, you know, it could be a good way to start testing out how we go about doing movies at the amphitheater. No, you know, again, I, off I... doing them on the... Those were really cool when we did them at the pool years ago. And yeah. I think we have a lot of people that it's invested enough that we would actually be able to make those happen. So... You know, throwing a food truck out there and having a um, a late night, you know, a nine to eleven with residents and all that kind of stuff. Just you know, once a month. I've talked just, about having the first annual cornhole tournament. It's one thing that I've been talking yeah. about doing. Is you know, I've been I think been thinking about this for many years and haven't really had the nerve to say I want to try to do that. But that's a thing that I think is real popular nowadays and. It is. All day, I wouldn't say all night, but go into the night, corn oil tournament. Kind of thing. There's a lot of stuff we could do. There yeah. Is. There I mean, we could just strictly make, make time for that, I would assume. I mean, we can talk I, about it at the next community committee meeting. Because yeah. I, I got to get going. <laughs> so, oh. John, just to let Tony go, I mean, getting Rick involved and in making sure that, you know, he knows that there's, there's, there is going to be stuff that we're going to need some assistance with. Um, we do know that that one, that the valve or whatever is going to need fixed and all that. I know he was planning on doing that. So, I mean, I would definitely get him on board. I would. Um, I, oh, that's I don't, a thing. I hate to stop you, but that's a thing. I, I thought he was talking about it wasn't really necessary. No, he said it wasn't necessary to do it right then and there. He said to do it at the beginning of this season. He oh, still okay. said it. Yeah, he just said it wasn't necessary. We we followed up with him, and he just said it was something that we would do Thank now. Um, not now, but you know what I mean. So, yeah, if you could follow up with Rick, uh, and I'm completely on board getting Rick to do some of the maintenance and things. We did set aside a little bit of extra money this year because we were anticipating some repairs. Um, hopefully, it's enough money. And then... Um, as soon as the weather breaks, I mean, I would like to get, I mean, I, everybody knows I'm not one to wait till the last minute. Now we're going to have the baby pool. So it'd be nice to fill them both at the same time. And we should have some updates probably within the next couple of weeks as to when, when they're actually going to be building the baby pool. I mean, I, obviously they're not doing it in 12 degrees or nine degrees, but we may have some updates on that. Yeah, when do you expect to be you, um, like as far as the, the, the Facebook or the residents, whatever you do, are you going to, um, 
put out some sort of announcement letting them know that you know the um, we're we're going to work with wherever we're at at that time working out details you know whether so they know what we're looking forward to whether it's reservation whether it's whatever yeah. okay I'm going to do exactly what I did last year. I will do it on the village page and then I will forward it to everywhere and just let people know based on when Franklin County starts coming out with their rules and regulations for the summer. I'm guessing that they're going to start in about April or early May. I mean, I'm not anticipating it before that. Announcements will start going out though about once, Tony, as soon as we find out from um, Jesse exactly what we need to do and if we really need to go through all of this or if it can just be a yay or nay, on the pool fees, we'll see what we need to do. Um, but yes, it will start going out. The flyer will be uploaded to the village um, Facebook page and the website. And then, um, you know, we'll just keep people in the loop. You know, at this point, here's the membership prices. Worst case scenario, it's going to be exactly like it was last year. And best case scenario, it won't be. Sure. Meaning it'll and be work. So let's do it. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts. You guys, I will get all of this legislatively put together if, and I will send it out to the two of you guys plus Joe first um, and make sure that you guys don't have any discrepancies on there um, once I hear from Jesse that I actually Sounds have good. To do it. And David, I just sent you Ron's, uh, it says Cardinal Vending, his name is Ron. Everybody's Excellent. name is Ron, by the way. No, we okay, got Ron and, good. Rick. Ron and Rick. Indeed, All right, guys, in that case, I think we're relatively well on good, good footing. So if there's nothing else, let's wrap this bad boy up and let Tony get where he needs to go. And David, I saved your number, so text me if you have any questions. And Tiffany, I'm going to look into those classes, and I'll let you know for Tanner. Absolutely. Thank you. All Excellent. Right, good All right, you guys, have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.